Right now I've created a sort of slightly greeny grey with ultramarine blue, lemon yellow and a touch of raw sienna and that's just going to give us a very quick and free distant horizon the end of the marshland. Now as we come forward we use essentially the same colours but with slightly more raw sienna added and certainly here and I'll probably bring in a little bit of light red to warm this area up. And then with a little bit of light red and ultramarine blue just a hint here along the base of the creek just where it touches the water It'll, it's going to help to define the water that as well. Put some masking fluid on these posts here so you can paint quite freely over them. And then I'm just going to lift some of that up just to give an impression of the dark reeds. Right now while this is wet I've just used a corner of the palette knife to flick out some grasses. You've seen me do that before. Only putting sufficient shadow in these trees that will help some of the buildings to stand out. It's amazing how quick you can get trees to grow as an artist, especially if you've got a building or a feature that's in the wrong place or sort of getting in the way. Now those buildings are fine, I don't want them any stronger than that, it's just a hint that there's something over in the distance and the mill isn't completely isolated because in fact the rest of the village is right here, just off the picture. What I'm just going to very quickly do, as we did before, is to just give ourselves a base colour for these roofs. Right now it's, it's taken about 15 seconds to paint those pantile roofs so I hope you realise that if you think something looks really complicated, if you break it down to simple shapes, when you come to paint it, it isn't going to take long at all. Right, just a little mix now of the light red, tiny touch of ultramarine blue and I think we'll throw in some raw sienna as well. You won't see that very much but it's quite a subtle effect and you'd only notice if it, if it wasn't there. I can paint quite freely over those windows. I'm not hanging round over this because I want to make sure that that mill's shape is correct before it all dries in. But again remember this is the base coat. It's not going to be the final finished colour of the mill. The lights come in from the left hand side, so the right hand side of the building, of the mill, of all the buildings in fact, is the one that's going to be in shadow. Not too dark, just to give us the first impression of the shadow side around here. But I want it to be definitely darker than the surrounding buildings. A because the brickwork is darker and B because I want that to stand out as a focal point even amongst this cluster of buildings. Right now I'm now going to just create an impression of these pantile roofs using the same technique that I've shown you earlier but in a much more simplified way. Right just going to scrape down these pantiles with a very dry brush. Not too strong a paint but a dry brush effect like that. Now using ultramarine blue and a touch of light red I'm just putting in a very very pale grey colour for these uh, flint walls. Right now you can see some of these reeds are quite wide in terms of the white space they've left so what we need to do and I'm just using a very small brush now or you could use the rigger and that's just to go over them and just take some of that stark whiteness off. The main thing is by rising above the horizon they are putting themselves very much into the foreground and pushing the horizon back where it belongs. Just a touch of the reflection for the mill, none of the other buildings would uh, reach the water to, to put any reflection, not forgetting these closer nearby reflections and that's really all we need to tell us that it's water and we're going to leave it at that. Remember that the light is coming from here so it's going to catch the shadow side of the sails. Certainly on the central strut of the sail there will be a shadow because that's quite a, a substantial structure as it has to be to, to hold the sail in place. Now an alternative way to do this of course is to, to draw in with a pencil and a ruler 
or using white gouache which is fine if, if you're happy with that but I'm just showing you how you could use it if you're confident enough just to use masking fluid and flick with a little bit of dark paint to create the hit and miss on the shadows. The thick walls, the recessed windows in the walls here are going to get quite a thick shadow top and left so let's deal with that now. Now you can see that the balcony is emphasised by that dark area we've done under there. Right now last leg now all I'm going to do is just start some modelling of the top of the mill and then I'm just going to put some dark ultramarine blue and a little touch of light red which will give us almost a black colour but not too black to give us an impression of the windows but from this distance all that we really need to do is touch a little bit of colour in. Again I'm just using the rigger to just give us an impression of the overhanging eaves. Oh and this, uh, this fantail is actually divided into eight sections. You can hardly see bricks from here because they are so tiny in, in relation to the overall mill. Well there we are, there's Klein Ecstasy and I hope apart from it being a pleasing painting for you that you can have a go at. The main thing is that you understand that the balance in a picture where you have all the heavy strong features on one side of the picture can still look a good composition simply by making sure that you balance those strong features by putting strong features elsewhere in a picture. 